Well, we're sitting here in Cody Addington's garage, and what are we, about a week and a half from uh, being on the lake bed? Yep. So Cody is number 888 He races the uh, 4400 class, and this is your race car, uh, and it looks a little lacking yeah. right now. Yeah. Still needs a little love. We're getting there, though. It's um, a Obviously, you're heading back to the Hammers. You've been racing it for a long time, and I see cars pulling up in the driveway right now. It's a Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, and it's time to come home from work and thrash on the race car, right? Yeah, Tuesday's usually our shop night. We try to keep to a schedule now more days because it just works out for work life, family life, and all that. Have a couple friends that come over, and Tuesday seems to work out, so we, we come up and hammer down on this thing. Now, uh, you've known that you were going to be racing the King of the Hammers for about 11 months and two weeks now. Yeah. And you're still at this point? Yeah, I mean, this is typical. <laughs> I, you know, I always say, like, when you were in college, were you ready for the test the night before? All night long. I wouldn't go to bed. I mean, I'd were you ready the long. week before or just the night before? You were only ready f the night before the test. You know, right? uh, as you know, we've both been going down to the Hammers for 15 years at this point, and... Uh, We've never been ready the week before or two days before. It's always been the night before or picking up parts on the way down there or whatever. Yeah, I mean, we race we race quite a bit throughout the year, so it's not like we just race hammers, throw it in the trailer, pull it out a month ago. You know, our last race was probably two and a half months ago. Pulled the engine, pulled the, tra pulled the whole car apart. Every main part went somewhere. Oh, so you um, had the engine out this yes, year, too. Yes, the engine so just came back. That leads me into, so uh, last year, King of the Hammers, did you finish? Yep, I you did. did. And you're thinking you finished? Uh, I finished 13th or 14th. It was a little mix-up with the points at the end, so. I got it, yeah. Yeah. So that was a big deal to get a finish at King of the Hammers, right? Yeah, I mean, it's been a while. That race is brutal, man. It, I'm not going to sit down with many people who actually have finished King of the Hammers, which is crazy. We hear all these big names and all these people, and everybody goes down there. Um, and we think we're trying to figure out who's won King of the Hammers, but the real deal is finishing it. You got to finish it before you can win it, right? Yeah, I have uh, tend to be a little hard on equipment and myself for a lot of years, and I just, I had to get some morale because it took me, you know, I didn't finish for a lot of years, so I finally, so you let's, know. Let's back up there. Yeah. So, um, you, your kind of claim to fame was that you came from up here. You're, we're in Forest Hill, California, yep. right next to the, the WFO shop. You're only 45 minutes away. Um, you know, the big group of NorCal guys have been going down to run the Hammers Trail uh, to go race King of the Hammers. And uh, you were this uh, young guy with a Toyota pickup, right? So yeah. tell us that story because it leads into all your other racing. So probably about, um, that was 2012, so probably okay. about four or five months before the race, I said, let's try this, let's see what it's all about. You know, I had, to, I had a Toyota Crawler. I spent four or five months by myself. I'm, I'm a contractor. Toyota I'm Crawler, a, meaning it's what, what year is it, it? It's a 1980 carbureted Toyota so truck. So 80 carbureted Toyota yeah. pickup, and that truck was built to go up to Fort Ice, go up to Rubicon, camp and party for the weekend, yep. drive it home, or bring it home on the trailer and go yep. back to work the next morning. Yep, had 39.5 IROCs. 39s you know, that's, on Toyota axles, which yeah, that, everybody calls in and says, hey, I want to put 39s <laughs> on Dana 44s or Toyota axles. It's like, it's a no-no, yeah. right? Yeah. So, you, so when Dave came out, and it was Dave and Jeff Knoll at that yep. time, um, they came out with this Every Man Challenge idea, yep. and you, must, you heard about it. Yeah, this was the first year of the Every Man Challenge, and uh, like I said, I just got this wild hair and um, came out here and you know, built the truck the only way I knew how, which you know, with some angle iron and some, uh, you know, some, some funky fab, but we, we knew how to keep a truck together on the trail. And it was Lee Springs, front and rear, Springs, right? Front and rear. Like six shooter knuckles, 40 inch yeah. tires on Toyota axles, dual cases. Was yeah. it carbureted at that Still time? Still carbureted. Still carbureted, day. right? And no uh, propane. Who, who rode with you that first year? Uh, Justin Foxworthy. Oh, I love number Justin. Number 10. I yeah. love Justin. Been on the trail at King and Hammers a bunch of times with Justin, and we've yeah. helped each other. Um, he's a good hand to have. As, oh, he's as, great. As he, your he, he got me into all this stuff. Yeah. So you guys went down and you finished the Everyman Challenge. We uh, we we finished the Everyman Challenge. So to back up just a little bit. Yeah. So we showed up with these 39.5 IROCs. Mm -hmm. So one night we were out at the bar with my cousin was in town. I said, Hey, what do you think? Like, what do you think signing up for LCQ? You know, anyone like was yeah. sign up? What could be wrong? 
I called Dave. I said, hey, Dave, uh, you know, what do you think? Should we bring some other tire? Or no, so we raced on 35-inch BFGs. Because you had oh, to no, have 35s. No, MTRs, yeah. yeah we're you had to 30... have 35s. You took your IROX yeah. off because yeah, you had, had to have 35s, 35s to race. And then I said, what do you think? Should we leave the 35s or should we bring the MTRs? He goes, or the, the IROX. He goes, yeah. bring the IROX. So we loaded the IROX in and uh, did the LCQ with the IROX. To go to the 4400 race. Yep. And so you are the only guy I know that has entered the 4400 race uh, on bias ply 39 inch IROX yeah. on Toyota axles with leaf springs front and rear. Yep. And then what, what ended up that night? What happened? We, we finished. We were about 15, 20 minutes outside of time. So you timed out, but you finished. Yeah, technically we're a DNF, but like, I mean, it, it went crazy. There was the finish line was, people were watching the tracker and it, it literally exploded worldwide. So here you were basically a construction worker on a shoestring budget, uh, threw this thing together, headed down there with Justin, and now you got, you got the fever. Oh, you know, for sure. I mean, you're on the way home, you're already thinking about the oh, next year. Oh, there's the people next year, next calling year. me. And, and then, yeah. so what did you, well, you stretched that out for a couple of years, right? Yeah, we raced that a couple of years. We did, uh, they gave us a spot for the big race the next year, and Kevin, one of your employees, yep. we made it a hundred and something miles before. Literally, we, we were smoked, we were tired too, but all it was was a bolt came off the flange for the driveline yoke, but we thought it broke the transfer case. It was it dark. It made so it was much cold. noise, you thought it broke the output. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, and then after that, so you and Kevin raced, you almost finished it yeah. again, and that's when you said, that's it, I'm building a car. Yeah, we raced one more time in uh, Legends, mm -hmm. and we finished that race too okay. in the Toyota, and then I uh, had Dan up at Fishmouth Fabworks build us a pretty budget um, solid But that was a car. nice car. So yeah. Dan Trout built that car, and you drove it to every ability that that car had and and some yeah. more i mean know? it was an ls1 it was only you know it was a nine inch car when everyone was doing 10 inch stuff so yeah we learned a lot we broke a lot of parts yeah i mean yeah um and then you, the fever didn't go away right well and, and so here's the deal you had this toyota pickup on leaf springs that you finished the everyman challenge you finished 4400 you came back again and finished another you know yeah. everyman challenge race um, or you call it legends, yeah. but you yeah, know, yeah, every match, yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, so all of a sudden, you're finishing King of the yeah. Hammers a whole bunch. Now you build an actual 4400 car, and what happens? Never finished in it. Never finished in that car. No. People think that you buy a car or you build a car, and it's the best of everything. And you go down there, and you're going to go finish, or you're going to be a contender. Yeah. And it's there are so many other things that have to fall into place to make that happen. So that car is still racing, and I think when we sold it, it was probably about at its peak, but my driving got to where I couldn't keep that car together, and I couldn't, my driving was out you went exceeding over the, the car. Yeah. So I pretty much, I didn't have a plan to buy this car. I literally sold that car. My girlfriend says you just moped around for months. I had money in the bank for once. You couldn't, you, but you couldn't. <laughs> You no, couldn't let and it go. This thing came up. Yeah, and and, and uh, you know nobody would have even dreamed that you would have picked up Lauren's car. You know no. it wasn't even an option, no, right? And, not uh, even close. And you know I think a lot of people in the industry, I'm sure, including Lauren, you know, saw your push, saw your drive, Lauren saw definitely that, did. Saw yeah. that you know you you wanted to make it happen. Yeah. And uh, you know <laughs> nobody has the budget to own a 4400 no. car, mm -hmm. so. I, I believe, and I'm sure you're going to agree with me, that you know you still have to give big thanks to Lauren to oh, even yeah. allow allowing this car to I come mean, together. You know, financially, you. there were some things that Lauren helped me with. I mean, you know, he, he he helped set the deal to where it was realistic for us both. You know, for for him to get me in the car and for him to. I mean, you get one of these, you wreck it the first race, you, you don't have anything. There's, well, it, it's there's like, no collateral. You break a Toyota axle, it's 250 bucks. Yeah. You blow the RCV in a 10 inch, it's yeah. five grand. Yeah. You know, so it's not how much the car costs, it's how much it costs to race the it. The maintaining were, is Were you ready for how much it costs to maintain this car? No, not really. And it still needed to be upgraded at the point where we got it too. So, um, you know, it was, it was kind of the same with this car, the way my old car was, you know, it was the same for Lauren. He was, he was ready to move on to something new. 
I was ready to move on something new. I didn't know what. Well, you guys were just in different stages yes. of your racing careers, yes. so this one filled your needs, yep. and then he was ready for the next one that filled And I didn't know about needs. single seat. You know, I always liked short course. That was more of my, I mean, I like all the racing. I like the rock crawling. That's why I got into the sport. Yeah. But I also am very competitive wheel well, to wheel. Well, now you have a car that can rock crawl, but yeah. really shines, you know, yeah. in the desert and in short course and in yeah. wide open situations. Yeah, and this car yeah. rock crawls really good. I've, I'm a firm believer in the front engine setup. Um, in, in real quick, it's front engine, IFS, Gearworks 10s, front and rear, yep. um, single seater. Single seater. So you can kind of see over the it's shoulder about, there. It's the, about six or seven inches offset. The engine's offset, yep. And, uh, but it's a big car yeah. for a single seater, you it's know. It's a big car, for, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Turbo 400, yep. So just a, uh, I mean, everybody's seen this car and this car gets it done. Yeah. And uh, I know that you sometimes, you know, you were driving over the top of the Toyota, you were driving over the top of the Trout car, and you're still driving over the top of this one, right? Yeah. You know, you're I taking mean, it to that level and a yeah. little bit farther. This but last year, finished, you finally, so yeah. after getting rid of the Toyota, not finishing in the, in the Trout car, yeah. you finished the race in this car. Yeah. Which is a big deal. It was, it felt good. It, it, you know, it we did. have a small team and everyone kind of came together to make it happen. And, uh, you know, we finally have, we've always had good parts, but you know, stuff happens and you, you, li you live and learn in this sport. So let me ask you this. Uh, you, you, you had a lot of DNFs in all those races. Did you enter pretty much all the races every I've year? I've raced every year since, two, since, well, I was sick one year, but technically they raced under my name. Oh, they did. That's so right. So Cade Rod drove two years ago for me. So since 2015, no, 12, 2012. So this will be our 13th year. You ra you know, so 13 years. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I've been asking this question. So in the 13 years, there's a lot of DNFs in there. Yeah. Um, what were what were just a couple of the simple things that completely took you out of the race? You already said one in the Toyota. It was literally a driveline bolt in the yeah. flange. I mean, a couple of them were. My old car had some fuel issues, and we could not. Everybody it out. vapor locks. We could I mean, not. Every car it out. I've been in at some point, yeah. You know. um, we had a couple driveline failures, which I think honestly, one of them was definitely our fault. Which, you know, so a part a part failure is a part failure. Yeah. For us, a prep failure is very hard to swallow because that means that you did something wrong. Did I did I build the drive line too short and it punched through the back of the T case? Did you know? Did th did that bolt come off and you know yard the car like that? For us, is hard. And even the biggest teams with the big that do the most prep and you know the yeah. best, they still miss things. Because we pride ourselves, you could see. I mean, everything's paint pinned. Yeah. Everything. There's a there's a whole sequence of you know just my brother and my friend AJ. Yeah. A couple of buddies How it goes that work together. on the car. Yeah. Um, well, you know, some of those little things, I, you know, that take you out of the race. I mean, uh, Eric mentioned us, you know, fuel pump, same thing, yeah. you know. Um, so something that simple, yep. a, an $80 part or whatever yeah. could take you out, you know. Um, so uh, actually that wasn't Eric, that was Sean. And the fuel pump didn't fail, but the way it was mounted in the tank, so much force, it rattled loose. So yeah. it wasn't the pump, but you tell everybody, oh, we lost a fuel pump, but you really know in your head, well, I've done, it was your prep, clamping it on, getting it secure. I've know? had both setups, and I prefer the external The external, fuel pump yeah. It, th there's just so much rattling around in the tank. This has a trap door in the tank. There's, you know, none of those. I mean, those Holly pickups are great, but that's your pre-filter. If there's a problem, it's way buried down in that tank. Yeah, you tank. can't get to it, yeah? Yeah. So, All right. Well, uh, what is your uh what's your goal for this year i want to beat last year and beat it by a while if we can i mean yeah. obviously to finish physically physically last year was pr pretty hard it, i mean it was it's a lot it's a long day in this and car you're doing by, it by yourself. yourself yeah yeah so when you got a winch you have to get out of the car that, go hook the winch, winch up. twice and it was it's it's tough to so just getting out of the car is a feat in itself so you have to get out go hook the winch up get yeah. back in winch it get back we out we have a little unhook. toggle where we can winch out here if we're just bellied or something but usually you got to get in it's yeah it's in and out in and out helmet you know the whole thing yeah so well what i do what i would like to do is we're going to come by your pit in the lake bed and hopefully see the car yeah in its full form um and then uh, uh, see your crew down there and, yeah. uh, you know, wish you luck. And then uh, we'll see how you do, right? We're going to be, we're actually doing, 
I mean, our color's always been orange. I always thought it was cool back in the day. If I built a hot rod, I'd do it orange. I didn't build the hot rod, but I have one of these. So we're doing a new wrap. It'll still be orange, but we're kind of mixing it up a little bit for this race. Well, you don't want to make it too different. We're not going to know who you I are. I know. You'll know who we are. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, you know, anything else you want to add? Uh, so, I Man. mean, basically, uh, something, you said something interesting as we were getting set up for this meeting, right? And this is what I'm trying to, uh, you know, get out to people is that here's your shop at home. It's 30 degrees out tonight. We're a week and a half from the race. Um, but... All of us have real lives too. Yeah. We have wives, we have, you know, real jobs, we got stuff we gotta do every day. And as we're walking up the driveway, you're going, Hold on a second, I gotta hook the dump trailer up and I gotta get to this job at seven yeah. in the morning and you know, what happened? You got a guy that a, a tree fell, right? Yeah, a tree fell in a house, so that's that's what actually, you know, construction helps us pay the bills for this along with some, you know, some great people that it, you can't tell this guy, sorry, I got to prep for no, KOH, I'm not no. starting on your house. No, we actually have an engineer to meet tomorrow, and he wants it cleaned out by 1 o'clock, so... So, you're going to be <laughs> yeah. there in the morning, getting yeah, the house ready to go, in the morning. getting that tree out of there, yeah. and so that's to add to more yeah. stress on your plate to yeah, go Yeah, always, and you know, it's, it's a juggle between family life, work, you know, dates with the girlfriend, uh, you know, hanging out with fin friends and family, and, you know... I get consumed by this from time to time, but sometimes you got to just pump the brakes and say, you know, you're doing this because it's fun. You know, it, it's become somewhat of a job also, but we really got into this because it's fun and I love it, you know? Well, uh, I will say that, um, you know, this car definitely has a chance of winning King of the Hammers. Your driving yeah. style has a chance of winning King of the Hammers. And as you know, you know, 20 different things have to come together absolutely perfect yep. and line themselves up to put you in that position yep. uh, to get up on the podium. And uh, I hope that happens for you. Right on. Thank you. Yeah, well, we're going to push hard and, uh, you know, give it our all. Good luck. Thank you. And uh, thanks for letting us come by the shop. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, guys.